So guys, Simon and I are now in this uh, old town, which is called what's the name? Sao Jia Lou. Is it too difficult for you to remember? Sao Jia Lou Gu Zheng. Lou Gu Zheng. Gu Zheng means the the, the old town. Right. Sao Jia Lou is a uh, is a uh, someone's uh, building or okay. home. Okay. So now we are here. So Simon is going to show me or do some demonstration about how to use the camera sure <laughs> so yeah cheers so simon is going to teach me how to Use the tripod. <laughs> <laughs> you, first, you gotta have a couple of burgers. <laughs> a couple of burgers, okay. And then, uh, if you don't, if you like, I use a small one because it's for convenience sake, and my handheld is not that stable. But I can get most of it out like this. To do that, the goal is not actually to the goal is not actually to rest it on your shoulders, but to, to have it at a point where it's balanced, so that when you're moving with it, a lot of that weight is absorbed by the balance. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, a lot of those, the shake is absorbed instead of being so. Hello guys, this time I have Simon Barnes, who is another Shanghai YouTuber invited in my channel and we had an interview covered several topics this is the first part of the meeting hope you guys will enjoy the chat okay guys uh, welcome to my channel today i got uh, a new guest here what's up? Uh, uh, simon what's, up? Si uh, what's your first name Sam Sam simon barnes simon barnes yeah. yeah so simon is an awesome guy that uh, uh, we chat uh, a little bit on the internet yeah. and we find out we, we got some like common uh, interests sure. like to take uh, videos yeah definitely yeah so today I got Simon here and uh, I want to ask Simon several questions sure. about your feeling about our country yeah, especially sure. Shanghai maybe of course yeah so last time I saw uh, your video with uh, Magnus uh, yeah. DMI yeah yeah so he he talked about like you are working in the education Correct, yeah. uh, system. Yeah. Is is that a public school or it's a? Mm. It's a private school, but private in China has a different meaning to private in most other countries. Mm -hmm. And most of your audience, if they're overseas, if you say private school, they would think that the curriculum is not controlled by the government. Mm -hmm. In China, a private school's curriculum is still controlled by the government, so we still teach the public education. We just have more freedom with, for example, how we structure our classes and how we structure our schedule okay. that the public schools do. So in China, we say private, but for the, a foreign audience, we might say it's like a public school with benefits. Okay. So, but do you find like, uh, is there something like slightly different compared to uh, a public school and a private school? Mm. So, like the perks of, and the major, the main reason why most parents would want a private school here are things like smaller classes. Your public schools will have up to 40 students sitting in one room, whereas in a private school they'll normally limit it to 20 or 25. Okay. So you, you get more time to interact with the students individually, which is something the parents seem to really value. Um, and then other things is private schools will tend to try to blend international curriculum okay so they'll teach the public curriculum and more stuff whereas the public schools will just focus on the government curriculum uh which age of the this the is grades one to three one to three okay our school is still a new school so we haven't got uh our senior years yet we're taking them from grade one up okay because uh, i was studying in a singapore private school uh -huh. here in shanghai okay, okay. and uh, we got like smaller class right but the language uh, that they do the education is English. Eh? Right. So yeah. it's, it's English the, the, the primary language? It's not the primary language. So we, we are a bilingual school. Mm -hmm. uh, and what that means is that 
uh, some subjects are taught in English and some are taught in Chinese and some will be co-taught by two teachers in English and Chinese. Mm -hmm. So we try to encourage the use of both languages. Okay. Uh, but we do primarily focus on Chinese as a part of our specific school's mission is to establish cultural confidence mm -hmm. and you can't be confident in your culture if you're not confident in your language. So we're a bilingual school that kind of favors Chinese. Okay. Okay, about the language. Last sure. time, uh, if uh, I remember correct, uh, Randy Fleck talked about uh, like uh, in, in the, the, the school, mm -hmm. some teacher isn't speak English but right. still be an uh, English teacher yes. or something, which yeah. is some kind of like illogical thing. Yeah, so. yeah, for sure. I think that's very common in public schools here is they'll teach, um, they'll teach grammar rules and structure and vocab, but they'll teach it while speaking Chinese. So they might tell you the pronunciation of a word or they might tell you the grammar rule, mm -hmm. but it's, it's done by a Chinese teacher who's speaking in Chinese. But, uh, that varies in the in our private school and in most private schools, you'll have English taught by a foreigner mm -hmm. and English taught by a local. Okay. And the way the locals, the Chinese will teach English varies depending between the schools. But uh, in our school, the Chinese English teachers will supplement the learning and ah. provide a bit more language support. Mm -hmm. And then the English English teachers will really progress the curriculum forward. Yeah, okay. But well, from my uh, experience, mm -hmm. I don't think it's an efficient way to study language. Right. Uh, when I was in the school, uh -huh. they always teach you grammar, but uh, right. they will make you like feel it's not interesting at sure. all. Yeah. It's boring, you know? Yeah. yeah so that's my <laughs> experience. I, I don't disagree with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, so then I'm going to ask uh, a more specific question. Sure. Uh, from my understanding, w when I grew up, like uh, I experienced like uh, uh, from uh, primary school to high school. Uh -huh. uh, so I feel our Chinese education system is more like for uh, the, the following of the instruction uh -huh. which the tutor tell you to do right. rather than try to inspiring you for some creating sure. thinking. Sure. Do you, what, what's your opinion about it? Yeah, I think the public schools here definitely favor that sort of system. And I think the reason is actually a little bit more complicated than most people might initially say. It can be very easy to take a surface level approach to it and say, oh, it's because of Gaokao and you've got to teach to the test and that results in a memorization approach. I think there's other aspects as well. For example, you, you can come up with all of the fun ways to learn Chinese. Mm -hmm. You can use mnemonic, you can use memory tricks, you can draw pictures, you can make it as holistic as possible, but at the end of the day, if you want to speak and read Chinese fluently, for every single word, or you need to learn a picture character, a pronunciation, and a tongue. Yeah. And so the Chinese language is largely just memori uh, without memorization, memoriz memorization yeah. it, you, you're going to be pretty limited in your ability to become fluent in Chinese. And so I think there's there's a structural system, but there's also a, a sort of historical and cultural element as well that's brought from the language that has informed a lot of the decisions they're making. Uh, because they do tend to be like, this is how you must do it. Uh, here's the information you need to learn and you have to memorize it. And then we're going to test your, your ability to remember that. But do you think like memorizing is or, or recite something is yeah. dominated in the yeah. method yeah. of learning? I, it, it certainly is. And there's a lot of drawbacks to that. Um, and as you mentioned, it specifically affects the creative aspect of it a lot. A lot often you'll find students who are transitioning from like a public school to a private school yeah. or students who are in a public school and then go to a training center. The training center teacher or the private school teacher might give them a, a, a creative homework assignment mm -hmm. and in order to explain that we'll provide like a visual demonstration so we'll show them maybe how one person will do it and then they will come back and hand the homework in and everybody's just copied your demonstration instead of doing it their own original thought you know like if, if it was a, a, a homework to draw a monster and then you have to label the parts of the monster yeah. if you're doing if you're talking about arms and legs you're teaching you know vocab around the human body um, Perhaps if you give them a demonstration, they will copy your demonstration for homework instead of coming up with their own. Yeah. And that's a result of the public education's focus on memorization. Mem memorization. <laughs> and because what that also tends to teach them is there is a right way and a wrong way. Yeah. And we're going to show you the wrong way and you must memorize it. And that 
specifically affects people's creativity and it also makes them fear to try different things because they're scared maybe it's the wrong way when a lot of the time the reality is there's no wrong way. Yeah, because uh, from my memory, like when I back to in the school, I was looking at the, the other students, mm. uh, my classmates. Sure. Is my homework is similar as right. those guys. Right. If I'm uh, like uh, different, I'm uh, get scared because yeah. uh, maybe the majority is correct, you yeah. know. Yeah. So, but w when I went to overseas, I can I did something which is totally different as my uh, my classmates sure. too, and I didn't get a lot of uh, like uh, criticized. Everyone has different opinions. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. yeah. Sure. So. Sure. So next question is uh, Simon. Do you do you believe uh, do you have like any kind of beliefs regarding to religion? Yeah. And do you think like reincarnation is is true sure. or not? Yeah. So a good question. I do have a strong religious background. Um, come from uh, Christian, largely Christian nation, and my parents are Christian, okay. and so I spent a lot of time in the church um, since moving to China. Not so much, but um, reincarnation, I think. That's the uh, parking lot just below us. Um, reincarnation is an interesting topic. I don't think it is uh, something that is a literal manifestation in this world. I don't think people reincarnate. Okay. I think that... Um, but is this part of uh, Christian religion? No. No? No. Well, sections of Christianity will believe that your soul is put in a body mm -hmm. as, a, when you're, as, a, as a child mm -hmm. yeah. and is like you're already an identity before you come to earth and then you go through the process of earth and after that you go to heaven or hell. Basically, it comes down to whether or not you acknowledge Christ and acknowledge God. And if you do, you, you go and spend time with them. And if you don't, you go to the only place Christians believe God isn't and that's in hell. Have you had any discussion with Chinese people about uh, like the soul and reincarnation yeah. and uh, the purpose of being on this planet? Um, my partner has Buddhist mm. beliefs but mm. um, very surface level beliefs so it never our conversations mm. never get to that level of depth. Okay. Most of my interactions with Chinese people around religion are like to rub a fat man's belly for good luck and things like that. <laughs> they, they, and they all, the, the one thing that shocks me is it's all about luck and wealth. It's all about money. Yeah. It's about it's not like doing things at the beginning, beginning of the year to, to get good luck for you so you can have a successful year. I know like people when they turn 33, I think, do like the thing where they throw pig guts on the roof to protect them because that's your, your unlucky years 33 yeah, I believe yeah, yeah. so they'll throw pig guts on the roof to to uh, get the evil spirits away so that you don't have a bad 33rd year um, it all seems to focus around wealth and, and, and luck and living a good life from the perspective of a wealthy life is a good life okay. do you think the, the core value of uh, religion like regarding to Buddhism mm. or uh, Christianity mm -hmm. or Catholic mm -hmm. or whatever it is, is like mm -hmm. gradually you move up, like from the religion, you know. In, in China or in China. just in, uh, yeah. Mean, because you are talking about it, uh, they want to get wealthy, yeah, they yeah, only yeah. focus on yeah. the lucky thing, yeah, and money, yeah. etc. Yeah. But that's not the, the core no, value exactly. of the religion. Yeah, I think, I think what happens as Shanghai's or as China's become uh, a lot more technologically advanced and <coughs> pushed. Uh, it's atheist. Uh, <coughs> one of the few governments that I'm aware of that uh, you can't be religious and a party member. Yeah. You have to denounce all religion to be, to join the party, right? Um, so they're definitely an atheist um, movement in that regard. And so often we've seen, at least in the Christian circle, we've seen a lot of persecution in that regard, where people have their churches that they've paid taken by the ah! or they have censored lectures or, or Chinese churches that are uh, only allowed if they get permission from the government they're only allowed to That's speak true. on certain topics and stuff like that um, and so that tends to remove a lot of it it filters out a lot of the um, a, a lot of the original intent and I think that's why if you look at Indian Buddhism and Chinese Buddhism for example there's a massive difference 
because a lot of a lot of Chinese or a lot of the Chinese Buddhists I know I can't speak to all of them obviously but a lot of them will come down to you know praying for blessing and they got to bow 42 times in order to yeah. to to earn favor or something like that and then you know a lot of small donations financially and things like that to try and accrue luck and accrue favor and accrue blessings that specifically have a result financially yeah and I think that is largely a result of the growing uh, emphasis on in China's societies about things like own, ownership of houses and and the focus on financial and material benefit. A lot of people that I've met, a lot of the younger generation I've met in China will say a rich life's a happy life, yeah, yeah. and therefore, when they, if, if they are pursuing a religious um, doctrine, any religion, because their value has now become rich life, good life. That means to find a good life in a religion means religion must provide wealth. Yeah. Whereas if you look at if you look overseas, you know, uh, Christian fundamental Christian Christianity or Ju Judaism or most other religious religions have doctrine corrupted by wealth, where they say do this to get money, but that again is the same thing we see overseas where the wealth is corrupting the core message where you know, for example in Christianity uh, in the New Testament, Jesus said, sell all your possessions, right? <laughs> yeah. um, that's directly at odds with modern life where it's about the crew or the possessions. So do you think like, uh, like Chinese people are too busy to, for their like, daily life to earn money, then they don't have time to think about the meaning of life? That's a good, that's a good, that's a good point. I think um, a lot of the younger generation, a lot of the wealthy parents don't even have time to uh, be with their kids so you know you have priorities right you, your priority okay I need financial stability I need a secure okay. household I need to make sure my child's education is, yeah. is, is, is secure and he has a future and you go and then you know once all of those things become taken care of then at the bottom you're like oh what's the meaning of life so if you're too busy thinking and trying to achieve all the other things yeah. You're never going to sit down for a coffee and think, what's the meaning of life? Or, or what is like the purpose of religion? You're going to be like, how can I get money to make sure that my, my kid can afford university? Do you think like the daily life is uh, relatively harder mm. here compared mm. to maybe uh, in New Zealand or, yeah. Australia or the other like, sure. uh, advanced countries? Yeah, 996, right? <laughs> yeah, 996. For those who don't oh, know, yeah, yeah, 996 right. is yeah. working from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six yeah. days a week. Yeah. Uh, that's something like Jack Ma has said. Yeah, 996 is how we do so well. I I'm totally disagree with that. Yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> that's insane. Man. That sounds like a slavery right. in a, a relatively like flight way. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. You know, um, slavery with benefits, right? Um, I think that that kind of attitude affects all aspects of Chinese life to be honest if you look at the students here my students are at school for eight hours a day they're six years old and then they go home and do homework <laughs> yeah for me I was like really frustrated I was scared to go to those schools yeah yeah so every time when I like woke up six, six or seven o'clock in the morning I, I just didn't want to get to, to school sure. to, to get those lessons. Yeah, I mean, why would you? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. As a kid, you want to just, just like play, right? Yeah, you yeah. want to explore life. You want to, you know, learn things vicariously. When you play, you make mistakes. Oh, I don't like that. I do like this. You yeah. discover who you are. Yeah. But here, uh, you're at school at eight o'clock and you leave school at four o'clock this is a private school <laughs> which is better than the public school of schools. course yes and then you only have 35 minutes of homework if, if you're in the public school you often come to school on saturdays even to do your homework and to yeah. do further self-study and stuff like that it's insane because uh, i found like in australia those kids are just got like ski board yeah. and, uh, yes. and go to the, those places yes. and, sure. uh, and the swing <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. you go to beach after the school if you live by the beach a hundred percent. That's very common for us. By the way, I love Australia beaches. It's yes. really beautiful. Stunning beaches. Yeah, Australia yeah. has amazing beaches. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, I think we, we went off to oh, the topic, a little bit of topic of religion. Of religion yeah. yeah. But anyway, I can. I think. Uh, yeah. This question. Is Interesting. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Sure. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Another part of the interview will come out soon. If you love my channel, please subscribe and thumb up. You guys are the reason that I spend the time and efforts making videos here. Thank you.